What's up, Padme Amidala? I'm your guide, Q, and today we're looking at some confessions from Fesshole on Twitter, and I will be both thoroughly enjoying and tearing to shreds these confessions, so get ready. My wife is easily a 9 out of 10. I'm a 3 at best. I'm not rich or good in the sack. Spend all my waking life waiting for her to realize what she could have. Keep wondering if it's all a reality TV wind-up. This is just a thing that happens sometimes. Like, I'm sure the incels would have you believe, like, oh, she's just using you for your beta bucks until she can leave for a 25-year-old alpha. But, like, sometimes painfully average people just end up with hot people. It happens all the time. Wife walked in on me scrolling Instagram while having a dump and accused me of touching my willy. I had to stand up and point to the turd in the toilet bowl. Now she thinks I wank while I'm shitting. Like, there's so many of these confessions that it could just be easily resolved by like, hey, how about we just talk about this and you believe me when I tell- Like, so many people spend time on their phone in the bathroom. It's not that hard to believe that they're not, you know, touching their willy. God, so much of the stuff on here is just like random sexual situations that were made up by 15 year olds. When my daughter was born, my wife insisted we call her Jenna, which was one of the names I originally suggested. 20 years on, neither of them know the name was inspired by my favorite prawn star at the time, something I deeply regret to this day. Like, bro, nobody does this. Who would fucking do this? Like, oh, yeah, who should I name my offspring, my daughter, that I will take care of? Let's name it after my favorite adult film star. Hee hee ho. Age 14 on a frosty night, I wrote the name of my current crush on the roof of a random car. Turns out it was my mom's best friend's car, and the name was of her dead husband, who had died six months previous. She was devastated. I still feel really bad about it. I feel really bad about laughing at this, but it's like, it's absolutely insane, but it's also believable, because I can totally see a 14-year-old doing some weird, random-ass, over-the-top shit like that. And I'm just wondering, what was the widow's mind like in that moment? Does she, like, think somebody's trying to mock her dead husband, or is there something paranormal? normal going on like it's just ugh. this one's just hilarious i fucking hate it so much i saw a young shop assistant looking very miserable one time she no lunch money her boss promised to pay for it if she could solve a rubik's cube which she couldn't hence her being sad so i solved it for her i always wonder if he ever did pay for her meal what is this fake ass fucking story bro it's so oh like what is this big bang theory ass sitcom storyline like oh i'll buy lunch for you if you can solve a rubik's cube like what all right somebody needs to translate this for me i think a lot of these are british so if you're british let me know if this is a thing during the early 2000s i went through a stage of saying ah Ah, Bisto! Every time I nutted after the act of lovemaking, girlfriend hated it. So yeah, I would say that's a pretty cringe thing to do, but I don't know what it's ref what is Ah Bisto? Does is this a thing? Is this like a oh funny ha? Huh? One Christmas many years ago, I placed one of my turds in an empty shoebox. I then proceeded to wrap the shoebox in wrapping paper and jumped on a bus where I left the gift on an empty seat. I've imagined the horror on the face of the person that took it home for years and years. One, this story is fake as fuck. Two, I don't think anybody took that shit home because the box probably reeked of poop. Three, the, the, just the fact that this person says I placed one of my turds makes me feel like they have like a bunch of Ziploc bags filled with turds in a collection and they decided to select one of those and put it into a shoebox. I don't know why, but that's just what my brain conjures up. We've lived in our current house for two months. My husband refuses to learn how to use the heating. If he's cold, he just asks me to turn it on. I now refuse to, even if I am also cold. So this one, it's like too mundane to be fake, but it's also insane. Like, heat, like it's literally, if you can turn on a faucet, you can turn up the heat. Like, how do you not know how to use it? Divorced and living with parents, I started visiting a female escort. I was caught by a family member leaving her apartment. I made up a story that I was seeing someone. Parents wanted to meet her and not wanting to break their hearts, I was paying for outcalls. She cost me nearly 10,000 pounds. 
Let me get this. You're trying to prove to your parents that you have it together and you actually have a partner. So you spend 10,000 pound on a fake relationship? Like, she's not gonna be with you at the end of the day. So you're gonna have to tell your parents that you broke up at some point. Or you're just gonna keep going into debt to extend? What, what, what are you doing? To lessen the stress of living with a teenage slash young adult family, my wife and I started vaping a few months ago. I used to have to hide my teenage smoking from my parents. Now I'm going to great lengths to hide my vaping from the kids. Like, who starts vaping at like 40 years old? I, I just want to let everybody in on something. I'm like 99% sure smoking or vaping, they're not actual stress relievers. It's just the fact that you're addicted to it, you're craving it, so when you get the craving, it stops your stress. These things do not actually stop your pre-existing stress from before you ever vaped. Do not use these things things as like a stress reliever because you'll just get addicted bro if i realize i'm walking in the wrong direction rather than just turn around i stop look at my watch move my head from side to side like i'm weighing up whether i have enough time to go wherever it is i'm pretending to go pull a face nod my head decisively and turn around this is actually just a high iq piece of advice i remember when i was in middle school the building had a really weird layout and so i would always be accidentally heading in the wrong direction and i would literally like be late to class because I was so embarrassed to have people see me turning around. Unable to decide between thanks mate, that's perfect, and thanks mate, you're a star, in an email reply to a colleague who dug out some info for me, I accidentally amalgamated the two into thanks mate, you're perfect. Couldn't go down his end of the office again. I just imagine the guy on the other side of the fucking email just being like blushing in his chair like this is not that big of a deal dude you can definitely go back there I'm sure you'll both have a laugh about it halfway through pulling the hottest girl I've ever met too much booze meant I went to the toilet to be sick I didn't want to smell like sick so my only option was to crunch up a couple of urinal cakes I told her the odd taste was a shot I had done at the bar, and it worked. This is once again the fakest fucking story I've ever heard. Two, you could literally go to the bar and just get any hard liquor, swish it around your mouth, and congratulations, you've just used mouthwash. Like, problem fixed. You don't need to pick up piss cakes, bro. They're piss cakes, my guy. My awful neighbor is an unregistered car dealer from his home address. Whenever he parks his cars for sale on the road, I immediately report them to the council as abandoned vehicles. All right, snitch, like I really need to understand your definition of awful neighbor to know how to feel about this because in America, it's completely legal to like buy and sell cars as an individual. So I don't know why you're messing with this person's livelihood unless they're like literal stolen cars. This is just an awful thing to do otherwise. My wife bought a box of biscuits for Xmas. I carefully broke the seal and ate all the top layer. When she eventually opened them, she was appalled to see half of the biscuits there and stomped back to the supermarket where she received a full refund and another box. This is just an infinite money glitch, but I also need to point out how I just hate that Brits call them biscuits. Like, I always imagine just like people eating dog biscuits and it grossed me out. They're fucking cookies, bro. We, the uh, revolution, America, USA, USA, USA. Me and my girlfriend both work from home, but in separate rooms. Quite often she comes in the room to talk to me and asks me why I always have tissues on my desk. She's very naive and keeps presuming that I have a sinus issue. I've rolled with it for two years. Like this is such a situation that just like a 13 year old comes up with and is like, this must be what relationships are like. It's like an adult would just move the fucking tissues from the desk or just tell your girlfriend you're jerking. Like what is the big deal? I was staying in a hotel and bought a girl back. <laughs> she said she was going to freshen up and gave me a wink. I heard the tap come on and thought she was planning adult fun in the shower, so I burst in. She was having a shit and had turned on the tap to cover the noise. How badly can you misread and fuck up a situation? Like, she was waking at you because she was, like, getting ready for you guys to bang in the bed. Like, bruh, just bruh, no. I'm a postman, and when you order something from Ann Summers, I don't even know what the hell that is, we all know. The label on the parcel says Gold Group International, which is the holding company. We know you've been ordering your special underwear and adult toys. I've never ordered anything like this, but I feel like I would not care about what the fucking postman thinks of it. Like, I'm sure they see way weirder stuff all the time. 
My GF and I like to role play. She suggested we play the angry farmer and the naughty sheep. She even bought herself a rubbish sheep costume. It was going well, but as she reached the pinnacle of her enjoyment, she shouted, "Bah!" Put me right off. Like what if you're if you're agreeing to role play as a farmer and a sheep, what else can you expect in this scenario? I made the error of saying out loud in front of my wife and daughter that the clock on the ITV coverage of the World Cup is very similar to the Cornhub color scheme and style cover blown. Like once again, this is an adult relationship scenario that could only occur in a 13 year old's mind. Like black and orange exist all over the place. You're not just gonna be compelled to be like, oh, it looks like the Prawn Hub logo. I'm currently seeing a brunette, a blonde, and a redhead. My house has never been so clean with all the vacuuming I'm doing. I used to work at a VFW hall, and this, like, word for word feels like a joke that one of the old timers there would tell. Like, this is literally just a dad joke. I can't use a public urinal due to stage fright, and I dread going for a piss when there's no cubicles free. If I have no choice but to use them, I whistle softly and make it sound like piss. Then I leave dejected in the hope of going back in again when I know it's clear. This is, what are you even doing, my guy? Like, every human with a sense of sound in their ears knows the difference between whistling and actual pee hitting the porcelain. Like, just go Go in and wash your hands. Don't just like roll up to the urinal knowing that nothing's going to happen. This is unhinged. I own a restaurant. When starting up, I would make ghost bookings at the restaurants nearby. They would turn away customers saving space for my fake bookings. Those extra customers may have kept me afloat in the beginning. This is insane, but I could also see this being ridiculously common. Like this sort of thing, leaving fake reviews at other restaurants, leaving fake reviews for your own restaurants. Like if you really just put in a little bit of effort to try and manipulate the system, I feel like it could be really effective, but also immoral. I've got a video of men sharing their biggest red flags and other men on top, unhinged relationship post video on the bottom, lovely channel members to the left, hope everybody's doing super well, skating on to the best of your abilities and drinking a lot of water. I'll see you guys super soon. Peace.